Siddharth, hmm? why do you hate electric vehicles? I don't. Hey, don't lie. Are I really don't. In fact, I really like EVs, but as consumers, I think we have unfair expectations from them and we really need to straighten out our understanding of the technology and its limitations. All we want now is bigger batteries and bigger range and I seriously think that that is not the way to look forward. Before talking about EVs, let's talk about what happened to diesel cars in Europe. During the 90s, European countries favoured them over petrol engines as they were believed to be a cleaner fuel, meaning it produced less carbon dioxide when compared to petrol. But sooner than later, say over a period of about 20 odd years, the governments and the people started to realise that though diesel may be a cleaner burning fuel, it produces a lot of local pollutants like suspended particulate matter, what we commonly know as soot. Not this soot, this soot. So there are two things that we can take away from this. The first thing is that we should be cautious about promoting or implementing something without a long-term study. The second point is that diesels are bad for city driving, but maybe better or even the best option when it comes to highway driving. This is because in highways, suspended particulate matter doesn't matter that much. So diesel powertrains are not evil per se and have some use cases where they may be the best powertrain option available for consumers. So in the same way, I'm starting to feel that EVs may not and should not replace all kinds of vehicle powertrains. And the reason for that is environmental impact. Lithium-based battery technology is mining, water and land intensive. I learned in economics about alternative uses for resources and if you're mining something, you know that land cannot be used for anything else. And especially with mining, the land becomes barren and toxic. Even Rowan Atkinson spoke about this. In June of 2023, he wrote an article in The Guardian about how he feels duped about buying into the EV frenzy. Now, Rowan Atkinson isn't a dumbass. He has an electrical engineering degree, so he does know what he's talking about and argues that electric vehicles are wonderful mechanisms, even if they may be a bit soulless. However, he goes on to point out that they may produce over 70% more greenhouse gases while they're being made. And this article caused such a backlash in the British Parliament that the British politicians actually blamed him for the poor sales of electric vehicles in Britain. Can you believe that? Politicians are the same everywhere. Watch this. The sale of EVs in the UK has slowed down so much and you won't believe who they're blaming for the decline in the popularity of EVs. Now, they're not blaming the exorbitant cost of EVs. They're not blaming the fact that you can't find a charging station for your EV. They're not even blaming the fact that electricity is now so expensive in the UK. Sometimes it costs more to charge your electric vehicle than to put fuel in your regular car. No, no, they've found the culprit, the reason why the popularity of EVs is declining. Here's the villain. So let's just admit it, lithium-ion batteries are not quite there yet in terms of how efficient and clean they are. And imagine trying to convert every kind of vehicle out there into a lithium-ion based electric vehicle. I don't think that's possible or should even be our goal in the first place. What we need is cleaner fuels and cleaner batteries to complement our current EV battery technology. So what do we do about this as consumers of transportation? No, we shouldn't be moving away from EVs as a technology, but we need to use them for what they're damn good at. And that is zero tailpipe emissions. An electric motor is actually the most simplest and efficient way to propel a road going vehicle. Sure, a V8 engine may sound great, but all those intricately designed components, thousands of them that go into building internal combustion engines at the end of the day, they're just simply turning your wheels. And an electric motor does that so simply and efficiently. Yes, electric motors are insanely efficient, but that won't make overall sense if the energy isn't clean. I know electric vehicles are cleaner even if you run them off a diesel generator, but why don't we do that in the first place? Or at least till we have a cleaner grid. As of now, we need to use EVs for these two things and focus hard on these use cases. 
The first case is trains and buses and public transport in general. Electrification of trains has already been achieved and they don't even need batteries. And Gustavo Petro, the current Colombian president says, A developed country is not one where the poor have cars. It's where even the rich use public transport. So if we really want to be eco-friendly, we must drastically reduce our dependence on personal transportation. Everything else like cleaner supercars and battery-powered style statements, these are not real solutions for a cleaner environment. The second way to efficiently maximize utility of electric vehicles is through small transport vehicles like bicycles, scooters, skateboards and heck even small cars. We need lighter, more aerodynamic vehicles that can run off smaller batteries. And smaller batteries will ensure that we don't ravage land and water resources to make massive batteries for expensive and bulky cars that barely anyone drive around. Smaller batteries will also give us an opportunity to scale up our clean energy grid. I mean, the ideal situation would be to charge EVs through wind and solar. And if batteries are small enough to match solar panel efficiency, then we will have a truly utopian EV ecosystem. So if the issue is with big batteries, why don't we stick inductive chargers below our roads? That's a fantastic idea, but imagine laying them down and maintaining them. Imagine their per unit utility. I hope it can be done and done well in the coming years, but inductive or wireless charging is terribly inefficient. A lot of the energy is lost as heat, and to prevent global temperatures from increasing and to prevent local heat islands in cities, inductive charging almost seems like a crime. If you can come up with a tethered system, I don't know, it may be practical and all of that, but that totally takes the fun of driving away. So to conclude, we shouldn't blind ourselves with EVs being the messiah of a greener world, but as one of the messiahs combined with cleaner fuels. If we are honest about going green, what we actually need to do is switch from heavy cars to lightweight vehicles and from personal transportation to public transportation. And this is totally my take on it. If you have something to say, use the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching Car Stats. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video.